Okay, thank you. So I'd like to show some of our most recent data uh, relating to the age-associated loss of motor units and how that may be affected by high levels of lifelong exercise. So it's a well-established fact that as we age, we lose motor units. Uh, and this was first pointed out in the 70s uh, with a study by Campbell. And he used electromyography and a term, a method known as the motor unit number estimate to show this. Um, so it's apparent that up to the age of 60, we seem to be fairly steady with the amount of motor units we have. And beyond that age, we see quite a steep decline. Um, and if we look beyond the age of 80, up to 90 years, we can see that in this muscle, there's only a handful of motor units left. So this deterioration really is quite drastic. More recently, we showed with a slightly updated version of the motor unit number estimate um, that even during healthy aging, in the vastus lateralis, um, recreationally active older people still lose around 30% of their motor units. So healthy active people that were non-sarcopenic by whichever definition we choose, uh, they had no mobility problems, yet they still had around 30% fewer motor units than young. So this loss of motor units probably contributes to overall uh, muscle atrophy and probably has implications for muscle function such as strength and control. So any intervention to attenuate or even halt these losses would be welcomed. And the obvious answer is exercise, in particular high levels of lifelong exercise. And this idea largely comes from one study. In 2010, a Canadian group also used the motor unit number estimate uh, to look at the tibialis anterior in three groups, uh, young, old and master runners. And they reported that the master runners had a similar amount of motor units as young and a much higher amount than age match controls. So the message of this was quite clear. If you exercise throughout life, you will preserve <coughs> your motor neuron health. So we wanted to see if the same was true for the vastus lateralis. This is an interesting muscle because we know it's where we see a particularly high level of age-related atrophy. So we performed the motor unit number estimate on 22 young, 26 old, and 21 master athletes. Uh, notable differences here are that the athletes had a much lower body fat than the old, as we might expect. But other than that, the old and the athletes were fairly well matched. The young and old were both recreationally active, but they were not sportsmen, they did not compete. Uh, and the master athletes had all trained and competed throughout adult life and achieved the minimum standards for the British Masters Athletics Federation within the last two years. So these really were athletes, master athletes at the top of the game. And to perform the motor unit estimate, we place a surface electrode over the vastus lateralis, the motor point of the vastus lateralis, and we then introduce a small needle electrode um, and have the participant contract to 25% of their maximum. And it looks something like this. We simultaneously record EMG activity from inside the muscle with the needle and from the surface and have the participant contract to 25% of maximum. We then take these somewhat messy signals, in particular the intramuscular, and decompose it into individual motor units. Um, and this allows us to come up with an estimate of how many units there are. So this is the traditional method that has always been used. We gain an average motor unit potential and the, we then take a surface representation of that potential. We can compare this to a maximally stimulated contraction. The idea here being if you know what one motor unit looks like and what all motor units looks like, you can normalize one to the other and make an estimation of how many there are. However, this method probably overlooks one of the most prominent aspects of aging, uh, that of muscle atrophy. Older people do tend to have smaller muscles, and this probably um, provides an estimate within a given volume of muscle, not the entire muscle, 
particularly in a large muscle such as the VL. So we make a further estimate whereby we take the average size of a motor unit and normalize that to the muscle size taken from MRI. And we refer to this as the immune or the intramuscular immune. So we perform both methods on all participants. And this is what we found. Um, as expected, the young people had the greatest muscle mass um, and there was no difference between the old and the master athletes. So the lifelong exercise does not preserve muscle volume, muscle size. But more interesting, looking at the number of motor units, we found this. The young have the greatest number, as we would expect, and there's no difference between the old and the master athletes. Um, and this is true regardless of what method we use, whether it's the intramuscular, where we normalize the muscle size, or the more traditional method. They both show the same thing. In VL, there is no difference between the master athletes and the old in relation to motor unit number. So the idea that this lifelong exercise may offer some protection against neuromuscular decline is appealing, but from what we can see here, it's just not the case. Uh, how do we think this is happening? The current method, current model we have, um, is that throughout life we go through a process of fibre denervation and re-innovation. After that fibre has become denervated, one of two things are likely to follow. That fibre will atrophy and eventually die, or it will be re innovated by a nearby surviving axon. There probably comes a critical tipping point with a, in, uh, during ageing where the process of re innovation can no longer keep up with denervation, and that contributes to overall muscle atrophy. We lose fibres and we lose muscle size. So, the take home message from this is that master athletes have similar motor unit numbers as recreationally active old. And this is around 30 to 40% fewer than young. And as always, this was a group collaboration. I owe thanks to the following people, all the study participants, and the MRC for funding the study. And I'll be happy to take any of your questions. Thank you. Thank you.